All right, man, so Stephen A. has finally responded to this man right here, Jason Whitlock. And if you want to know why Stephen A. responded to Jason Whitlock, let's get to his response or his inquiry first, and then we'll get into whatever Stephen A. had to say about him. Let's get into it. Stephen A. Smith is the Kevin Hart of the sports media. Smith is a plant. Disney and ESPN installed Smith at the top of the sports media world because his inadequacies as a journalist make him easy to control. He ain't lying. When I listen to Cat Williams talk about Kevin Hart and Steve Harvey, my mind immediately drifted to Stephen A. Smith's memoir. Smith's story just doesn't add up. But they're not telling us I only played one game because I cracked my kneecap. One and a half points per game. How do you average that in one game? Is there a one and a half pointer in Division II basketball? H how do you do it? It can't be done. My nigga. <laughs> it's an impossibility. And I know I'm not great at math, but you can't average one and a half points a game in basketball in one game. My bone cracked in half my first year at Winston-Salem State. A bullshit, a bullshit, a bullshit. Are there two Stephen Smiths that played at Winston-Salem State? Because one guy, according to the stat sheet, played nine games, and the guy on TV is saying he never played a game. Oh, the guy on the right is Big House Gaines, the coach, who again, Stephen A. Smith in his memoir claims that, oh, he, uh, Big House Games is like a father figure. I said, let me say this about this. All right. I didn't know it had all these edits and shit, but regardless, neither, neither here nor there. I just don't understand what that has to do with the broadcasting career. Like if the critique is Stephen A. Smith lied about playing basketball at Winston Salem, regardless, what does that have to do with the ascent of Stephen A. in ESPN lore like that ain't the reason ESPN went and picked him up the reason ESPN picked him up was all the years of um, you know like story writing reporting whatever he did all leading up to that point beat writing all that type of shit and to me I feel like once again Cat Williams did something right we all seen that oh shit an industry person outing industry people generates views because you have credibility that the normal person, me, wouldn't have say in those things, right? If I said that about Stephen A., it wouldn't really hit the same because Jason Whitlock worked at Fox Sports, he worked at ESPN, he has the credibility, and Stephen A. also has the dislikability to where there will be people that will jump on it just because they hate Stephen A. Smith. The story doesn't really fucking matter at the end of the day because who cares about him playing at Winston-Salem? Either if he lied or not, that's my... I, I don't give a fuck. If y'all give a fuck, then... Cool with y'all, but I don't care about that. So then he responded to Jason Whitlock on his show. Is about maybe like the whole thing is an hour, but the first portion of it is about something else. He pretty much ran down things of why people don't fuck with Jason Whitlock, right? So he's pretty much saying like, if y'all think I got a lie about playing basketball and my career is what it is at ESPN at this point, right in my memoir, then that's just on you because there's no reason for me to lie about that. That's his sentiment, right? And then he goes on to talk about Jason Whitlock as a person. He goes on to say Jason Whitlock is evil. He goes on to say that Jason Whitlock isn't liked by any black journalist. Grantland, which was started by Bill Simmons, I guess they were starting to Grantland black. And nobody wanted to work with uh, Jason Whitlock because this, this in totality, they think he's like a coon or something like that, right? And my take on it is, I don't even know what the fuck my take on it is. Because Jason Whitlock... To me, like I said, the reason he's doing this is because of the Cat Williams effect. That's the really only thing, that, the meat and the potatoes behind it. Um, Stephen A. probably didn't have to respond to this, but I guess he felt that Jason Whitlock was going so hard on him that he needed to come out with a response because it is diminishing his book. Jason Whitlock is using this as a moment in time because, like I said, it's easy for a celebrity to use another celebrity that they know or intertwine with to get views by people because people hate Stephen A. Smith. Even the notion that Stephen A. Smith does things to acquiesce to Twitter to me, it doesn't make sense because Stephen A. Smith is one of the most hated niggas on Twitter when it comes to certain cultural issues. He literally goes on Fox News, and this thing, he literally said he speaks to Mark Levin, one of the most uh, popular conservative radio hosts of all time, Sean Hannity, all these people like that. He has certain political views that he speaks on this show that are not uh, Twitter, you know, Twitter activists approved. So these narratives to me, they just don't make too much sense. The only narrative I can see going through this is, Cat Williams said this. Stephen A. just announced his paperback is coming out. And if you don't know, when books come out, they drop hardcovers first. And when your book does well, they throw it onto a paperback, resell it out to people again because your book's selling so well. That's the only reason I feel like Jason Whitlock is saying that. Maybe he's bitter. Maybe he's spiteful. I don't know. 
Stephen A. obviously claims he, he's jealous. He wants my career. Let's go to another video of Jason Whitlock speaking about uh, Stephen A. Smith with this guy. Just to get more of a and This is what idea. I was getting at. How did he become the face, the voice of sports media? The guy knows virtually nothing about sports. He's never, other than maybe occasionally, in, back in the old days, he might have a trade rumor or something like that. But actually understanding what's going on in sports, understanding the decision making of any organization, he's always embarrassingly wrong, embarrassingly bombastic, embarrassingly stupid. He's all quick to play the race card to be popular over Twitter. Uh, I just I don't. Well, I do actually get the Stephen A. phenomenon, and and he's a plant, just like Cat uh, Williams said about Kevin Hart. You see how many times he's invoking the name of Cat Williams and Kevin Hart? Like I said, that's his driving motivation. That's all this. He see, damn, 42 minutes. Shit, this nigga went viral from talking about all these people. And then Kevin Hart, he talking about Kevin and Steve Harvey. So that what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk about Stephen A. Smith. It's no mystery why somebody like Stephen A. is popular. Because at the end of the day, X's and O's and all that shit, the general fan, they don't give a damn about that. Let's just be honest. They don't. We can act like we want these upstanding journalists to give us the best breakdown, X's and O's. Don't tear down the players. Don't do this. Don't say that. But then if they didn't do that, y'all niggas wouldn't watch. The reason y'all watch Stephen A is because in some way he gives y'all entertainment. Maybe Jason Whitlock isn't that entertaining. That's why Jason Whitlock ain't where he wants to be. Because at the end of the day, it ain't about who knows the most about a sport. The most popular people that know the most about music they're not the top music podcasters. Maybe you can say Joe Budden because he was in the music industry, but most of the people that know a lot about music are not the top podcasters, not the top content creators. You know why? Because their personality is not driving the audience to care what they know about hip hop. That's just the, that's just the facts. The great Rush Limbaugh, when I read his book, he said, yes, it's about the information, but most importantly, it's about having an entertaining show. I can have all the, 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 new, the, the geopolitical know-how, and I can know all those things. I can know every date, every whatever. But if I'm not entertaining, nobody's going to give a damn. And that's just the bottom line. Whether you hate Stephen A or you like Stephen A, there's something in that that's entertaining. Even you hating somebody is a form of entertainment because you hate watch shit. People hate watch shit all the time. They hate comment. They hate like. They, they hate everything. So, um... Once again, it's just, it's just, they, they put, they like don't put the most talented and most accomplished in those positions. They put the biggest buffoons and the easiest to control in those positions. Anyway, your thoughts on. And the funny thing is like in those positions, right? At a certain point, Jason Whitlock was one of these people that was sitting at these desks. Now, obviously he was never big as Stephen A, but he was still one of these people on these networks, multiple networks, went to ESPN, then went to Fox. You were on these networks as a prominent, like, I know people don't like Jason Whitlock. But Jason Whitlock, when he spoke about certain issues, he was still getting Twitter, you know, viral, this and that. So he was still a prominent person. He wasn't Stephen A. He wasn't Skip Bayless. He not Shannon Sharp. But he was still a prominent person in sports media at a certain point in his career. So when they placed you up there, were you a, a puppet and, a, and someone that could easily be controlled? Or is it like only the niggas that keep being successful over a long period of time, they're the puppets uh, and they're the plans? And even with Stephen A. The nigga got fired from ESPN and then got put back on ESPN. Now, if you want to say that's because, oh, they want the Cinderella story. They want to tell you, hey, Stephen A got fired and he came back. Now he's the most successful of all time. That's the story of it. They want to build a story. We all know Disney's story building is the thing they do. But I just don't believe it. I believe it's pretty simple. Who is going to deliver us the views without making us lose money? And also, Stephen A is very open about him being a fucking company man. We know he's a company man. And I said this in the Pat McAfee video I just did. A lot of y'all niggas would be company men too if they're paying you $12 million a year. But since we're not being put in those positions to get paid $12 million a year to talk about sports and, and everything else, it's easy for us to be like, ah, I would talk about that if I was up there or I would, I would have stood on this. It's easy for us to say. And that's why I live in the reality of the world. And a lot of y'all live in the delusion of the world that y'all would do these things. That's what be irking me about social media and just people online in general. Cause everybody acts like they're not in these tribes, but everybody's in these tribes. If you hate Stephen A, you ride in with Jason Whitlock. If you hate Jason Whitlock, you riding with uh, you riding with Stephen A. Now, what Stephen A. said about Jason Whitlock being fat, uh, people hating him, I don't know shit about that. I, I don't know. But my only thing is, the motivation of Jason Whitlock to me isn't to expose Stephen A. for not playing basketball at Winston-Salem. Right? He's actually a plant. 
He said Cat Williams' name like five times already. Views, clicks, ratings. It's the beginning of the year. Let's get off to a hot start. And to be honest, we haven't heard too much about Jason Whitlock. I used to watch his, his Blade show, Fearless. We had the old black dude sitting next to him. I used to watch it. But shit ain't been too hot for him. How do you get your name hot in the streets? You bring up the most popular in your field. And it'll get you hot. Especially if they're the most popular, but they're also polarizing. If you talk about the most popular in your field, but they're loved overall, you just look like a hater. But if you bring up the most popular in your field and they're polarizing, you can slide into that opposite, that opposite audience that doesn't like them. And it works every time. So, you know. On that clip and the stuff I talked about uh, last week about Stephen A. and his fictionalized comic book memoir. Yeah, I mean, the word bloviate comes to mind when, when I think when I see clips like that. But, you know, with Stephen A. Smith, look, there was a time I did enjoy his stuff. I talked about his ESPN2 show that I was a pretty loyal viewer to. I always thought his commentaries on Allen Iverson back in his days were actually very good. I enjoyed his NBA coverage. But this current form of Stephen A. Smith, what I will say is this. He says so damn much, but so damn little of substance. And look. When you hear certain people take certain political stances, whether it's the vaccine or on immigration, uh, racial and cultural issues, um, you you do start to realize, and Cat Williams got into this, about are they Cat saying Williams. what is on script? Are they a puppet? Or are they allowed to ever step out of line? And Stephen A. Smith in many, many respects, to me, like I said, once again, I feel like this is just like revisions history. I've heard Stephen A. talk about the Biden presidency on his show. I've heard him talk about a plethora of things. Like I said, he, he's claiming that he speaks to Mark Levin, one of the top since Rush Limbaugh died. He's probably the most, I don't want to say the most popular, but he was for the old people. Radio host in the conservative movement. He talks about conservative shit. Maybe not ESPN, because like I said, that's his job. And I know most people wouldn't talk about whatever they want to talk about at their job. That's life. That's reality. You're not going to risk $12 million for a, a blip of a faction of Twitter being like, salute to you for speaking the truth, brother. Now I lost $12 million. You're just not going to do that. So, I don't know. It's kind of weird to me with this whole, the, the whole narrative uh, around them. But, you know, whatever. People got to build their narratives. They got to get their shows off. And that's just my that's my take on it. Obviously, I know everybody's going to have their different takes and opinions on it. Because they, they dislike Stephen A. They dislike Jason Whitlock. But that's my look on it. I believe at the end of the day, just wrap it all up. The only reason Jason Willock brought this up was for uh, attention. And you saw what happened with Cat Williams, and I reiterate that for the fifth time. Uh, that is my reasoning for him doing this in this moment. And now Stephen A. responded, so he's going to now respond to it, and it's going to blow up for him. It's going to do him a little bit better. More people are going to go watch his show th today than they had before. And also, you know, if Stephen A. had to speak about it, Shannon Sharp got to speak about it, and this is what Shannon Sharp had to say about Jason Willock. Oh, right. I don't, I don't, look, I don't mess with it. I don't mess with him. He knows I don't mess with him. He likes to bring my name. You know Fox tried to feed him some information about this and that, and he threatened. Mm. I don't get into all that. I just look. I know who I am. I know what I am. Okay, y'all say all y'all little stuff because, see, the problem, the problem that he has with me, see, and this is what a lot of people have that, mm -hmm. that are journalists. You see, I, sit at the, I can sit at a desk on ESPN or I did it at Fox, and I can do what they do. Mm -hmm. They could never live in my world. They could never play pro sports. So mm -hmm. now, not only could I play sports and I was damn good, mm -hmm. I could sit across and I'm more entertaining. I'm more mm -hmm. informative. Mm -hmm. I'm more educational than you. And see, those that can. And the thing with that too is, like Stephen A didn't have that. So Stephen A is not Shane Sharp. He's not uh, Michael Irvin. He's not you know Charles Barkley, Shaq, because they actually played. They're actually great. So he's not that. He's just super entertaining. So that puts him on the level of these guys. But when you got a guy like Shannon Sharp who's entertaining but also has the actual experience, it'll give you and lend you more of that credibility than the guy who just studied it for years, i.e. like a Skip Bayless, even though Skip Bayless all through his career has been entertaining. People like him, or I don't know about now, but they did. Um, and that's pretty much what I, I believe his point is as far as a Jason Whitlock guy. Because he's like, I got, I'm a journalist. Like, I've been doing this for 50 years. I know all the stories. I got the scoops. I got, I know the X's. I know the O's. Why don't these people want to watch me? Because like I said, at the end of the day, it all comes down to entertainment. Who is entertaining? Y'all are not watching people who talk about music that are boring. Y'all are not watching people that talk about sports that are boring. Y'all are not watching people that talk about wrestling that are boring. God, whatever it is, y'all are not watching them. No matter how much we want the positivity, we don't want these people that are just going to go crazy and be loud and give uh, crazy hot takes. And we... 
Y'all do want that. That's that's a fact. That it just, in an entertainment game, that just it is what it is. The smartest, most well knowledgeable people about the subject are not typically the people who are the ones that are speaking about it on a day to day basis. You know, a lot of these people uh, on Fox News and CNN and whatever, they're not the most well versed in world geopolitical things. They're the ones that are probably the most charismatic. They have the most personality. You know what they do? They bring on the boring fucking experts to give y'all, break it down for y'all, and then they make it entertaining. This is how it goes. That's how I look at Stephen A. Smith. Do I think Stephen A. Smith is the greatest sports analyst of all time? No. He's probably one of the most entertaining of all time. And that's just why he gets paid uh, the big bucks. So that's my take on that. I'm going to try to in the conversation down below. See you on the next video. I'm out. Peace.